Hi, I'm Catherine and I'm a project assistant at the Cedric Museum of Earth Sciences at the University of Cambridge. Today I'm going to be taking you on a tour of the Colin Forbes building, the Cedric Museum's new research centre. The Cedric Museum's Brighton Forbes Collections Research Centre consists of the AG Brighton building and the newly completed Colin Forbes building, which you can see pictured here on the left. The existing AG Brighton building on the right here is named for previous museum curator Albert Bertie Brighton and contains the museum's paleontological collections, mineral collections and thin sections, as well as the conservation lab and the archive. The current archive space in the Brighton building contains over 2,000 boxes of records, including those relating to the history of the development of the museum, the history of the Sedgwick Club, as well as field notebooks, sketchbooks, and catalogues of specimens. The Brighton building is also home to our conservation lab, available for use by the University of Cambridge Museums Consortium and the wider university physical sciences community. As well as the new Colin Forbes building, the old large object store has also been transformed into a purpose-built thin section store, increasing access to our thin section collection from the storage you see on the left to the long span roller wrecking as can be seen on the right. There is also space within the store for researchers to study the collections. So now you know a bit more about the existing facilities, let's talk about the new Colin Forbes building. Building work commenced in October 2018. November 2018 saw foundation work commence. In December 8, 2018, concrete ground beams were laid and January 2019, concrete was pumped into the foundations. Work continued until September 2019 when we received the keys to a new research centre. So why did we need a new building anywhere? The Cedric Museum is home to some of the collections of both scientific and historical significance. For example, the Harker collection contains around 300,000 rock specimens from 124 countries and 115 islands. The new research centre will not only allow us to store these collections in appropriate conditions, but improve their accessibility for researchers and the public alike. The current rock store, the Atlas Building, is located a mile away from the Brighton Building meaning our collections have been spread across three sites, including the museum building itself. There are around 160,000 igneous and metamorphic rock hand specimens in the Atlas building, and about as many sedimentary rock and thesis collection hand specimens. However, as you know, their corresponding thin sections and even some of the associated field notebooks are stored at the Brighton building. Bringing these collections together into one building will greatly enhance access for research and teaching. Moving a collection is the perfect opportunity to do a large scale condition assessment and take draw level photographs to increase the accessibility of the collection. With approximately 12,000 draws in the Harker collection, for example, a full condition assessment under normal circumstances would be a large project that would take a long time to complete. Recording this information as we pack and move it will give us a good idea of the condition of the specimens and highlight any areas of concern. As I'm sure you're aware, although sturdy looking, rock collections can be vulnerable to decay. Fluctuations in relative humidity can also cause things to expand and contract, causing cracks and delamination, which could affect our fossil collections, for example. By creating a purpose-built environment for our collections with consistent temperature and relative humidity, we can ensure the longevity of the collection and hopefully protect it from any further decay. There are five new spaces in the Colin Forbes building. The geological store, the archive store, a consumable store, plus two workspaces. The building was named for Colin Forbes, a much loved previous curator within the Department of Earth Sciences, pictured here on the right. Now you have a background of the research centre, it's time to take you on a tour. First up, we have the researcher workspace. This is a large space that will eventually be furnished to accommodate visitors to the collection. 
with three slanted windows letting in natural but indirect light and an air conditioning system to allow us to control the environment in the space, it will be an ideal location for visiting researchers to peruse the archives, for example. Next on our tour, we have the archive store. This is additional archival storage to the current space in the Brighton building that is climate controlled to help preserve our most delicate archival collections. The temperature of this store is set to 8 to 16 degrees Celsius, so if you're visiting we'd recommend you bring a few layers. And the relative humidity is kept between 30% and 50%. The floor slab in this room is separate from the rest of the building and is designed specially to help with insulation. This is ideal for storing collections such as documents, photographs and negatives. There are 16,000 negatives in the Svalbard Exploration Archive alone. Between rooms in the Colin Forbes building, we have extra wide corridors. This is great for transporting large specimens and equipment around the building. Next up, we have what we think will be the envy of all. Here we have a dedicated consumable store where we can see, keep the materials and equipment we might need for day-to-day -day activities. As you can see, we're still filling and organising it, but it's great to have access to materials so close to the collections. Here we have the curatorial workspace. Again, this space is still to be furnished properly. We will be consulting with possible users as to what the furniture and equipment will be most useful, and then deciding on how best to furnish and lay out the space. This is a good sized room, and as you can see in the image on the left, we have a large roller shutter door, which allows us to bring our collections, our largest objects from the store next door, straight through to here, to then be studied by visiting researchers. As you can see, we're currently using the far end of the space to store materials for the collections move on trolleys, as well as one of our new pieces of equipment, which I'll introduce you to later. Our final stop on the tour is the geological store. You can see in the two images, we have a variety of racking, which will be populated by different types of collections. This store is environmentally controlled with four air changes an hour. The temperature is kept to 16 to 22 degrees Celsius and relative humidity is between 45 and 55%. As you saw earlier, the floor here has been specially reinforced to take the weight of such a heavy collection. 50 20 meter piles were put in with a network of concrete beams between. For our collections in drawers, we have the high density drawer storage you can see here, which we can slot our drawers into once moved over from the Atlas building. On the left, you can see our first completed row of Harker collection drawers in their new home. Each column of the racking can take 36 standard height drawers and has a maximum load of 300 kilograms. This short clip gives you a sense of the space of the large object racking area. This store also has long span racking, which is used to store our larger fossil specimens. These have been moved from the old large object store, which as you saw before, has now been redesigned to store thin sections. Some of the racking has the roller decks you can see in the image on the right. This has been designed so our largest, heaviest objects can be moved from the racking to our specially designed trolley, more on that later, and into the curatorial workspace. Not only does this improve accessibility to our largest objects, but having ease of access also helps protect them from damage caused through handling. Here you can see some of the larger, more awkward to move objects. On the left, we have a selection of mammoth tusks that have been stored together on a single board and can be easily removed from the racking. Some of these tusks are very delicate and having the roller decks helps protect them when being moved. On the right, you can see one of our ichthyosaurs in the collection. This beautiful fossil in particular was collected by Mary Anning and has recently undergone conservation work it's also quite heavy. 
Because of the weight, moving fossils of this size can be a challenge. And in the previous store, a number of specimens such as this were inaccessible due to where they were historically stored and their size. We are thrilled that all of these larger fossil collections can now be accessed more safely and easily by staff while also protecting the objects themselves. With a new store such as this, new access equipment was acquired. I'll give you a rundown of what this equipment is and why it's important. First up, we have our Genie Mobile Elevated Work Platform, or MUC. Our new racking is approximately four meters high, and we have a lot of drawers that need loading up at that height. This MUC allows us to safely and easily load drawers into the new racking. On the image to the left, you can see a flat platform, which drawers can be placed on, and on the image to the right, you can see a fold down tray. We can place multiple drawers on each tray and move them up to the top at the same time. This is great for improving efficiency and loading the racking. The MUP can also be used to carry out work at height if needed. The tray can be used to hold a laptop and a member of staff could work away accessing the drawers they need. With the MUP, it's required you have a license to use. So what happens if someone without a license needs to access one of our highest drawers or the top of the long span racking? Well, here we have our platform steps, which can be wheeled around the store as needed. The rails can be moved from one side to the other, depending on what side of the racking you'd like to access. Again, these allow you to reach materials stored up high, and they also have a gentle incline, meaning it's safe and easy to carry drawers, boxes, etc. up and down. We also received a few new pallet trucks, an upgrade from our very old trolley on the left. The big all-terrain pallet truck on the right is great for unloading the van and moving pallets on the uneven terrain outside. Finally, we have our pedestrian stacker and custom designed trolley. The stacker is a bit of a combination of a forklift and a pallet truck. Because it's pedestrian, no license is needed, but it can be used like a forklift to raise and lower pallets and the trolley. The trolley has rollers, like the racking, and a movable handle. It has slots at either end to allow the stack of forks to lift it as required. The trolley is used to roll materials on and off the roller decks of the racking and can then be wheeled into the curatorial workspace, for example, as needed. Here you can see some of the mammoth tusks are being rolled from the racking onto the trolley. As you can see, we have stoppers to stop any objects rolling around when the trolley is being moved. Here, Collections Manager Dan is lowering one of our largest fossils from the mid-height racking. Another addition to our stacker trolley team are the extensions you can see just sticking out on the left of the trolley. Our largest fossil is approximately 3.3 by 1.2 meters. The extensions allow this fossil to be fully supported when being transported on the trolley to prevent any bowing of the specimen under its own weight. So now you've seen the new space, how are we going to fill it? We have 150 tons of rocks to move into the new space. In a project we've dubbed Moving a Mountain, we are in the process of transferring these collections into the new store. As I previously mentioned, a collection move such as this also presents the perfect opportunity to condition assess and digitize the drawers of specimens. On the left, you can see the first stage of the process. Once the drawers are taken from the racking, they are triaged to identify anything potentially harmful, as well as identify any decay, mechanical damage, or pest activity. The drawers are weighed too, due to the 300 kilo weight limit of each column of racking. Here we have an example of the data we're taking at this documentation stage of the process. We score the condition from one to five and note any soiling, mechanical damage, crowding, decay, pest activity, and any potential hazards. As we enter the weight, the spreadsheet calculates the total weight, adding the 67 kilograms that is a rock stack and pallet. We can then use this to ensure the van isn't overloaded, as well as making sure that the racking isn't overloaded too. On the left, you can see the digitization setup. 
we transfer the rocks across to be scanned by the 2D scanner on the left. And once the drawer is empty, we vacuum it and then pack it ready for transport. We put any car trays of specimens that have loose labels or contain multiple specimens in conservation approved poly bags to keep them together and use acid free tissue to prevent any damage through movement in transport. We then place a poly felt square on top to further immobilize the rocks and protect them in transport. This is an example of the image we're getting from the 2D scanner. We give each straw a shipping barcode once it has been documented and digitized at the Atlas building, which you can see attached to this straw. Once the specimens are packed, they are loaded into the van within rock stacks, which are the wooden cabinets you can see in the image on the right. They are then transported across to the new store. Once at the new store, the rock stacks are unloaded using our all-terrain pallet truck and brought into the Forbes building through the roller shutter door. Empty rock stacks from the previous load are then put into the van and taken to the Atlas building. Polyfelt is removed to be reused. The draw weights are then scanned into our racking filling spreadsheet so we can ensure we aren't overloading the racking. Here we have the spreadsheet used to load racking to allocate the draw's new location number and check where limits are being met. As I previously said, one column fits 36 standard height draws and has a maximum capacity of 300 kilos. Once the drawers are at the new building, we scan the old AB or Atlas building number and the weight. Once the column number limit or weight limit is reached, the cell at the top will turn red and we start scanning weights into the next column. We do make allowances for objects out on loan, for example, when calculating the total weight of each column. The final step is to carefully and safely load the drawers into the racking. And that's how we move a mountain. As with much of the world, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused delays to filling and opening the research centre, with staff working from home for around six months and work on the collections relocation project halted. Pre-lockdown, we had a team of 40 volunteers assisting with the documenting, cleaning and digitising of the collections, which was subsequently stopped for over a year and staffing was limited due to the need for social distancing and safe working requirements. The image in the centre shows one of the COVID safety procedures we have implemented in the Atlas building to allow multiple people to work on site whilst being in separate spaces. The research centre will enable us to do so much more. We are very proud of our new space and we plan to realise the potential to create a world leading facility equipped for varied, varied audiences to use and enjoy. From engaging with local communities and schools to enabling easier and safer access to our collection. This will also allow researchers to study and travel the world using rocks at the Cedric Museum's Brighton Forbes Collections Research Centre. Thank you for listening and joining me on the tour. Thank <laughs> you.